with reference to the yield curve there are certain questions that may arise in the mind of a finance student like uh, where does a uh, yield curve come from or uh, why is the yield curve sometimes upward sloping and other times downward sloping or how the interest rates are affecting the shape of today's yield curve so these and other are the few questions that are related to the yield curve and its characteristics let's talk on these issues with a world of no uncertainty so how yield curve work under certainty we know that all investors already know the path of a future interest rate this means that a bond cannot be expected to provide a higher rate of return than those of the others bonds available in the market this means that all bonds and securities must provide an identical return to the bond holders and if it not the case then the investors will bid up the price of high return bonds until its price or return become equal to the other bonds that are available in the market an upward sloping yield curve may indicate a short term rates going to be risen in the days to come we have an example in this regard suppose you want to invest in bond for 2 years now there are two strategies to work in this particular scenario strategy 1 is that buy and hold a 2 years zero that is offering yield to maturity of year 2 which is at the rate of 6% now with the face value of $1000 at current price the dollar uh, the bond's value is equal to 890 that we get by dividing the face value over 1.06 which is the year 2's yield to maturity then it matures in 2 years to its face value uh, that is 1000 this means that 2 years growth factor for the investment would be equal to 1.12 uh, and that is the solution of face value which is divided by the uh, present value or it is this 1.06 square the value of 2 years definitely if we multiply p not with 1.06 square it comes to 2278.40 then we have strategy 2 that says that invest $890 in one year zero coupon bond with ytm of 5% and on maturity then reinvest the proceeds of this bond in an other one year bond so we have rolling over of investment in strategy 2 the next year's interest rate offered by one year bond is called as r2 or the uh, rate of return of year 2 then both strategies must provide equal returns therefore we can say that the proceeds after year 2 to any strategy should be equal to like uh, buy and hold 2 years zero should be equal to roll over one year strategy this means that the proceeds from either of the strategy should be equal to each other this on or if we quantify this we would say that the 800 890 into 1.06 square should be equal to 890 into 1.05 into 1.06 square uh, now in place of 1.06 square for the second strategy we have an r2 and that r2 is unknown if we solve this equation for r2 we come to the next year's interest rate equal to 7.01% so that is a rate that would be equalize our equation one year bond offer a lower ytm that is 5% than the two years bond which is offering 6% we see that the second technique has a compensating advantage in the sense that it allows rolling over of funds into another shorter period bond next year when rates will be higher that is 6% we see next year's interest rate is higher than the two days interest rate by just enough to make the rolling over one year bond equally attractive as investing in the 
second year bond and we see in the graph in the first phase we have timeline from 0 to 1 and 1 to 2 that is 2 period timeline in the second phase we have depiction of strategy 1 that we have a stand loan 2 years 0 bond and here in the picture 3 at the bottom of the screen we see our year 2 strategy in which we have 2 consecutive 1 years investment bonds in this scenario we need to have a distinction between spot rates and the short rates spot rates basically are the rates that are prevailing in two day for a given maturity like the two day spot rate two years spot rate is basically the geometric average of the two days and the next year's short rates so if we to have a short rate today and if we have a next year's short rate then we have a geometric average of these two rates the resulting figure will be termed as the spot rate whereas the short rate is the rate that is for a given maturity for example a one year time period at different points in time in our example we see that two days short rate is the five percent and the short rate at the end of year two is 7.01 so how short rates are related with the yield curve slopes we see that if r2 is greater than r1 then the average of these two rates is higher than the two days rate this means that y2 or the yield at the maturity of the year 2 should be greater than the rate of the second year then the yield curve slopes upward and if r2 is lesser than the r1 then the yield curve would, would be sloping downward means that these yield curve basically reflect the market assessment of the coming periods interest rate uh, we see in this regard that if the r2 is greater than r1 this means that it may indicate the market expects rate to rise in future and if r2 is greater than r1 uh, less than r1 then it may indicate that market expects uh, rates to fall in future what is the difference between then short rates and spot rates if we see this diagram we see that the top line represents the short rates for each year that is 5% r1 r2 7% r3 9.025% and r4 11. 0.6% so these are the short rates the lower lines that is we see at y1 5% y2 6% y3 7% and y4 8% these lower lines represent basically the spot rates or equivalently these are the YTMs on zero coupon bonds for different holding periods as we see these holding periods are ranging from one year to four years and the conclusion on this uh, discussion is that the yield or spot rate on the long term bonds reflect the path of short term rates anticipated by the markets over the bonds life what are the forward rates it is the forecast of a future short rate implied by the market this means that being a break even interest rate this forward rate equates the return on an n period zero coupon bond to an n minus 1 period zero coupon bond, uh, bond that is rolled over into a one year bond in year n and in this uh, particular equation uh, this means that if we solve it for the short run short rate in the last period then the 1 plus r in that equation will refer to the forward rate we see that as the future interest rates are uncertain so the inferred or observed rate is the forward rate rather than the future short rate that equation if we repeat again it replaces y with the f so 1 plus fn refers to the forward rate and equivalently this equation can also be written as like 1 plus yn raised to power n and again we have the next expression that shows the uh, forward rate
the example we have to compute the forward rate for year 4 if the rate for year 4's maturity is 8% and the rate for 3rd year's maturity is 7% then putting the values into the computation formula of forward rate the resulting figure is 11.06% and that is the uh, forward rate for the year 4 available at right now